Hey there. Today we're going to put the power supply in. Um, it's something that I like to do first when I build systems because it helps me figure out uh, where some of the cable routing is going to go. It's also a good idea for this case specifically because the power supply is going to be obstructed by the motherboard. The power supply sits here, the motherboard sits on top. So in order to make sure that I have full access to route all of the cabling the way that I want it to be, um, I'm going to do the power supply and then do the motherboard. Now the power supply that I've selected for this build is an AI-1000P. It's a more recent design, it's only a few years old, but it's well proven, highly rated, and actually has an 80 plus platinum certification, which is about the best you can do at the 1000 watt output, which this power supply is rated for. There's only one higher efficiency rating than 80 plus platinum, and that's titanium. One thing to note in the event that you're operating a computer in a power constrained environment is that the wattage rating is the output. This power supply will actually draw more energy from the wall than it's going to give to the computer under its maximum load. That's part of what the 80 plus rating is going to tell you. There's actually some math you can do to figure out the exact ratio. I haven't done that here, but I'm, I'm pretty sure at 1000 watts, um, this power supply will actually draw something like 1200 from the wall. The lower the rating, the higher that number is going to go. I'm not sure what the lowest possible rating is, but uh, buying a power supply with a high 80 rating, meaning gold, platinum, or titanium, is a general reflection of the quality of the design, the integrity of the components, and if you're operating in a power constrained environment, it helps you keep the total amount of energy and heat that is produced by the power supply down as low as possible. For air-cooled builds, that can be more important. It depends on the situation. This build's got enough volume that I am not terribly worried about it, especially since the power supply has an opportunity to exhaust its own heat, independent of the rest of the system build. Now, I have to compliment the engineers at MSI because this thing doesn't have any RGB or fancy lighting solutions that I could see in the marketing. It might be possible that there's something hidden in here, but it's tight, compact, clean. It's got excellent color contrasts, and it's going to match the motherboard, which I'll cover here in a later video. All right, so this power supply is going to have to be mounted with these parts facing towards the interior. You don't really have a choice about that. Now, even though they have this faceplate written so that the power supply is going to sit upright like this, uh, power supplies, unless it's specifically stated on the box somewhere, don't actually care how they're mounted. If your case supports it, you can have it sideways, upside down. The only thing that matters is that the exhaust vent on this side is facing out. So, first thing I'm going to do is get the motherboard tray out of the way. so that I can drop the power supply in from the top. That'll make it just a little bit easier. So This case actually has a cushioned base that the power supply can sit on. So that's sitting roughly where it's going to sit in the final build. All that will be left is to bolt it down. Whenever you're dealing with small computer fasteners, it's a good idea to never try and cinch everything down. That's why I like using these precision screwdriver kits. They're actually designed in such a way as to make it difficult, though not impossible, to over torque a fastener. And especially when you're dealing with just little holding fasteners like these, they don't need to be cranked all the way down. Just get them snug. Once you feel the base of the bolt make contact with whatever you're attaching it to, no more than a quarter turn. For power supply bolts like these, that's plenty. There's no reason to push any harder or do any more. Just like that. And now, because I already know all the components that are going in here, I know what kinds of cables that I need to put on in order to be prepared for those components. There are some common ones that you'll always need. This guy powers the main port on your motherboard. It's the big 24 pin um, ATX style connector. This can be different, 
depending on your motherboard. Um, some of the smaller motherboard types will use uh, slightly different connectors, but it's all labeled, in, at least in this power supply kit, and it should be labeled for any modular power supply that you buy, where modular means that you can take these little cables off of the back. I prefer modular whenever possible because it means that you only have to have the cables in the case that actually get used. If you buy a non-modular power supply, you're going to have a big pigtail sticking out of the back that's just all of your connectors. And no matter what, you have to figure out what to do with them. And cutting them isn't always a good option. Like You should only cut power supply cables if you have an electrical background and you know how to cap them properly or address them in other ways to make the, the case safe. Otherwise, and this is coming from experience, I've actually cut up power supplies for fun a couple of times. These things will short out really easy especially the older ones. And you know, one, one or two good big pulses of electricity is all that it takes and the power supply is permanently dead. Tie cables off somewhere uh, out of sight if you can and only ever cut them if you know how to really know what you're doing or if you have an electrician friend who's willing to do it for you. And when it's in, the uh, safety catch will drop down. Sometimes you'll hear a click, sometimes you won't, but once it's in, if you pull backwards on it just lightly, it's not going to want to rock or give or do anything weird. And that's ready to be connected to the motherboard once the motherboard's in. Now, one thing that's unique to this power supply is a USB to motherboard header connector. Um, this is something you'll only find in power supplies with digital monitoring capability. So this particular power supply has the ability for me to go into a piece of software on the desktop and be able to see power output to all of the different components and get metrics for how much energy that my computer is consuming at any given moment. And this can be helpful, again, if you're in a power constrained environment where you really want to understand what your appliances are doing. Places like Southern California where the amount of energy you'll pay per watt hour changes based on when you're using it. Um, I can be a bit of a nerd on that front. I, I like having access to this type of data. Um, if you buy an analog power supply, you won't get this, but there are other ways that you can monitor power that a computer is consuming. I find that this is a better solution overall. If you do get an analog power supply, what you get is a little bit, it costs a little bit less money. Not much, but this power supply has this capability. Now, I don't know yet where it's going to go on the motherboard, so for the moment, I'm just going to leave it right here. Then there's this guy. He's going to power the CPU. You're always going to need him. Every computer's got a CPU, especially if you're building in larger uh, form factors like I am. And it has a dedicated socket on the back of this power supply that I can connect into. Um, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters what side of the cable in this case you plug in. As long as it connects, it's okay. Now, depending on where on the motherboard the 24 pin connector goes, I might need to redirect it and have it come out the other side of the case. But once I get the motherboard laid in position, I'll be able to make that, that judgment a little bit more effectively. PCIe. These are your major motherboard accessories, like your GPU. Now, some GPUs, some of the newer really fancy ones, are going to be using the new 600 watt connector, which is an absolute beast. I'm not sure if the GPU that I have uh, decided to get is going to carry this connector, I'm pretty sure it carries three of these older style PCIe connectors. In any case, um, just look at what the connector is like on your GPU. If it's got a receptacle that looks like this, then you know you need your 600 watt, which means that you won't need one of these. Now the GPU I've selected, I'm pretty sure has three power sockets for PCIe. When you're hooking up a modular power supply, these split ends are going to be facing the component and this uh, collective end that you can't separate off is going to go into the power supply. Anytime you see split ends like this, um, it's going into the component and not into the power supply. Now, in my case, I am getting a very high power GPU and I happen to know that it's going to pull down. If it uses this form factor, it's likely to need three of these PCIe connectors. On the back of my power supply, they actually group these connectors together. 
So it's important if they draw a box around a cluster of PCIe connectors that you plug all of the connectors that are going to one component into one of these clusters. Once I put the motherboard in position or once I lay it out close to position, I'll know for sure where all of these parts need to go. And then I will reposition them accordingly. But for right now, I just want to get them plugged into the back of the power supply so that I can start to see just how much cabling I'm going to have to accommodate and start to kind of visualize solutions in the long term. Um, one disadvantage to doing it this way is that until you have the motherboard and it's ready to be laid in position, you do have a bit of a mess on whatever work surface that you're going to be building on. I actually know that no one's going to need this table for a couple of days, so I have the time necessary to take my time and really think about how I want all of this to work. But if you're going to build a computer in a more chaotic environment, I would recommend setting up a workbench somewhere, garage or you know your home office, some place that's out of the main traffic areas because when your computer is in this state, um, it's really easy for dogs, cats, kids to come along and give this a good yank, not knowing what it's going to do. And while these connectors are sturdy, um, you know, a seven or an eight year old comes along and grabs this and gives it a good rip, it's going to come out. And it's probably going to ruin your very expensive power supply, if only because now you can't plug your connector back into it. And no, these are not easy to repair. Under ideal conditions, you would be mailing it back to the manufacturer and getting a new one or getting it fixed by the OEM. Some custom electronic shops are willing to rip into these. Uh, but unless you live in a major city, the odds of getting any kind of uh, third-party support is uh, it's pretty slim. Now we've got this guy. He's my least favorite connector of all of the connectors that go into modern computers, if only because of all of the little daisy chains that go in here. Um, he uses a standard six pin, which means he'll go into one of the little auxiliary ports down here. Um, but these L-shaped channels are for internal accessories. Think big internal hard drives, Blu-ray players, um, solid state drives using the SATA format pretty much all have this type of power connector. It's separate from the data port on these drives um, and it is essential. Every single component that you have in this computer is going to need at least one of these in order to run. So I happen to know, for example, that my long-term goal is four SSDs mounted in the drive rack on the other side of this case. And this connector has, let's see, one, two, three, four available connectors. So I'm going to need two of these guys in order to power everything that I want on the case because I've also got two hard drives here that are going to need electrical power. Although thankfully, this case does make provisions for that type of event by giving you one of these receivers that this connector can plug into. So because of the way this case is set up, you only need one power connector to run two larger drives. Now these guys are going to go into the, on this power supply, they're going to go into the SATA and Molex section, which unfortunately is on the bottom corner underneath all the cables that I've already plugged in. Since I know this guy is going to run my solid state drives, I'm going to approach from the opposite side and let the cables just sit out on the other corner of the case. I probably should have plugged these in first. All right, so that's all of my SATA power. That's my motherboard, my CPU, three PCI connectors for the GPU. This is one of those situations where you don't have to be worried if you happen to have a bunch of cables left over. You probably did it right. Um, especially with, with newer components and standards, it's actually really hard to hook a motherboard up wrong. If it fits, then it's going to work as long as you've got the part connected to the motherboard that's supposed to be there. So, um, for example, as a rule of thumb, it's not a good idea to plug a computer in and power it on without the CPU seated on the motherboard. So I wouldn't even hook the CPU power connector up to the motherboard until the CPU is sitting in place and has been locked in. The rest of these connectors appear to be redundant, but that's okay because they give you a nice little storage bag. You can toss everything in.
and you basically never have to worry about it. Oh, uh, this little cable is just a standard USB connector. In the event that you had an internal USB port available, I don't want to use an internal USB port. I would rather connect it to a header on the motherboard to uh, run data on the power supply. That saves you bandwidth on the USB controller and uh, frees up a USB port for other uses should you have any in mind. Now, one side note with braided cables. I love braided cables, by the way, but they do have an interesting weakness in that over time, any kind of fine dust that gets into the computer case is going to find its way into these cables and it's going to be really hard to get that dust out. It'll give them a really gritty feel. They aren't going to feel new and smooth. Part of the reason why I paid so much attention to dust filtration on the different parts of this case is because I don't want to let those fine particulates in where they can do stuff like this to my parts. I would like to maintain a case where the parts look new as long as possible and where dust doesn't work its way into fan bearings and heat sinks and do the stuff that it tends to do. Related to my last point, if you're going to store cables that are braided, um, a lot of power supply OEMs are going to give you a bag to put them in. It's a really good idea to just put them in the bag and if you're going to store them, avoid storing them in dusty places because bags like these are not airtight and even closed and packed down like this. If these cables sit for a couple of years, which they're likely to do, then you're going to find that dust will blow in from the sides here. And uh, when they get in the bag, it's just it'll do the same thing to the bag over time. So these these cables should be stored. Like if you put them in your garage, it should be a, a clean garage. Don't throw them out in your shed. Don't go stick them in a, an exterior storage bay or something where dust and temperature shock can get to them over time. Because these cables are really helpful when something breaks or goes wrong or when you need spares. They're an excellent resource. That's part of why power supply manufacturers go to the effort to send you a bag with all these cables in them. From experience, I've actually got my hands on a really powerful server grade used power supply only to discover that its connectors were proprietary and no longer supported. So I got this nice power supply and I couldn't actually use it because it was missing, I think it was the connector for the CPU. So uh, just take the time early on to make sure everything is stored properly so that you can find it later when you need it. and then. It's a lot less inconvenient should something go wrong and you need to access your spares. So that's actually it. This power supply is, is in its current setup is now ready to be connected to whatever it is you want it connected to. All power supplies are going to have a cutoff switch on the back. Uh, leave it in the closed position until everything is set up and you're actually ready to turn the computer on. It's considered bad practice to have this switch in the on position when the power supply isn't connected to anything. Other than that, this computer is just going to sit the way that it is until I'm ready to install the motherboard, which is going to be the next step.